All right, hi, and welcome back. Attorney Steve Vonder. Welcome to another exciting episode of Litigation Whiteboard. Okay, so in this video, we are talking about Strike 3 Holdings. We are talking about BitTorrent litigation, and we are talking about John Doe gets to keep his dough. What are we talking about? Without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard. Okay, so we're back. So this is a really important case. A lot of you that watch my videos, you know, I handle a lot of strike three cases, especially in California, strike three holdings, the video production company, the maker of Blacked, Tushy Vixen. And they file a lot of lawsuits and they've won a, uh, I'm gonna say they've won a lot of lawsuits, they've won a lot of settlements, we know that. But this is a groundbreaking case because in the state of Washington, not to be confused with Washington DC, but in the state of Washington, we had a John Doe defendant right here. We had a John Doe defendant win $47,000 right there. And the plaintiff took it up on appeal and lost. Okay, so let's look at the mechanics of what happened here. I'm gonna read the opinion for you at the end. It's very short, concise, you'll like it. It's one of those opinions you'll love to read from the appellate court, United States Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. So Ninth Circuit Court is out here. I always think of the Western the United States. It's always, I shouldn't put that there then, should I? But you know, it's kind of this Western area, Ninth Circuit. And out here, we have a case called the Cobbler. Cobbler, Nevada case. If you don't know what that is, check the description area. I'm gonna put that below, but we have the Cobbler, Nevada case. It basically, in a nutshell, says when you're a plaintiff like Strike Three, you wanna sue somebody for downloading your movies through torrents, through, the, through these anonymous um, downloading networks. You need to show something more, something more. This is Cobbler. Something more than just the fact that John Doe is a subscriber of an internet account. Something more, okay? Um, you know, show, show some, what they try to do a lot of times, I'm not going to go into it here, a lot of social media tie-ins and things like that, but I'm not going to go into that, okay? Uh, but John Doe here fought back. John Doe said, you know what? I'm going to get up there and I'm going to throw some wild nasty pitches and I'm going to see if I can get strike three to strike out. Okay, so here's what happened. Nutshell, strike three files their complaint. That's your lawsuit exhibits. This is your tushy, blacked vixen. These are their movies, the main ones you see where they're accusing you of downloading these through the torrents. Okay, um, so the lawsuits filed, the exhibits that the court grants routinely, what we call ED early discovery and what that is is they can send a subpoena to your isp comcast verizon at&t uh, cox all that so but they have to come up with something more than just a subscriber so this is what they try to do in every case we deal with a lot of cases this was they're looking for so in this case john doe said well wait a second i didn't I didn't do anything. I didn't download it. What am I? Why am I paying a settlement when I didn't download? Uh, retired police officer John Doe, I believe he was 70 years old even, but uh, he filed a countersuit. Okay, so he filed a countersuit to the complaint. So what happens? He's got the complaint. He files the countersuit. What were they seeking? Declaratory judgment, DJ, as I call it, DJ. I did a great video on this. I'm going to put it down below with the cobbler case and a video on what a declaratory judgment action is, how to go on the offensive in intellectual property cases. So check this out. But what they were seeking was a declaration, the countersuit declaration saying, court, declare me that I'm not an infringer. I got the proof. He goes and he hires a forensic company. Forensic company looks at his hard drives, laptop, says, I don't, I don't say anything here. Why, why are we paying for copyright infringement damages? So, um, Whatever reason, Strike Three made their decision that they were going to dismiss their complaint. Okay, so they have the complaint up here, and they're saying, "Let's let's switch colors here a little bit." I feel like getting some red in here. Okay, so uh, so you can dismiss your own complaint. Okay, you dismiss it. And wh however, what they did is they dismissed it without prejudice, which means we can bring it again if we want to. Okay. So this was very important. I think the appellate court took a look at this and said, well, wait a second, if you're still keeping open this future threat, this future right to file a lawsuit, isn't he, doesn't he still have standing to pursue his declaratory judgment action? And the, the district court said yes, and the appellate court said yes. 
Uh, he does. And so the court basically granted him on motion for summary judgment. The court said, we will grant the defendant's motion for summary judgment. We will award 47,000 in attorney fees. And on appeal, the appellate court, United States Circuit Court of Appeals, Ninth Circuit, okay? Ninth Circuit right here affirmed the decision of the lower court. And let's take a look at that opinion so you get a good look at it.